Hey guys, Tony here. So you know I love answering your questions. Let's share my screen and I'm gonna answer some of your questions from the YouTube comments. Guys, if you want answers to your questions, post them in the YouTube comments, I will get to them. So let's take a look at some of the questions we have. Let's see what we can answer. Okay, I, I try to answer them the best I can and as quickly as I can, but let's take a look. Aside from malpractice insurance, is there anything else needed to have if I want to see private pay, no um, private pay clients with no insurance? In other words, not going through insurance. So I need to have a release form signed or any other paperwork in place. Uh, absolutely. Like you still have to follow your state practice act. You still have to go by state guidelines. If your state requires a referral or a referral after 30 days, you have to have that in, in hand. Um, you have to have a, a consent to receive medical care. You are still a healthcare provider. Assuming you're not providing personal training, performance, stuff like that, you need a consent on the patient's behalf. If you're a covered entity or not, I would still have some sort of privacy notice in place. Most state practice acts require you to protect the privacy and the information about your patient. Um, I would have some sort of waiver release of liability in place, whether you're doing PTO, TSLP, there's always gonna be risk of injury, risk of further harm. You need to have yourself covered from a liability perspective. Um, so yes, there is definitely, I would say there's really no difference aside from um, being able to submit claims to the insurance company, a release for that. There's really no difference if you're billing insurance or billing self-pay. You should have all of the legal bases covered. Uh, look at what other clinics are using. Look at examples. I believe uh, David Bailiff, the captain in the mobile PT group, has some information available. Uh, it's just everywhere. So get out there and find it. But absolutely, you have to have your bases covered. Let's take a look at another question. So this one came in a day ago. Hey, Anthony, hope you're doing great. Been watching your videos, really helpful. That's awesome. Guys, I can't tell you how much it means to me when you tell me that something I produce was actually helpful. I uh, never had the opportunity to work on enrollments throughout my entire experience as a med Medicare biller. Um, so excited. So please share the complete tutorial on how we can enroll our provider with the payer EDI ERA using Office Ally and PracticeMate? That's actually a really great question. I don't cover that enough. Let's go in. So I, I went into um, the Office Ally website already. This is the homepage. I'm assuming you've already got an account with Office Ally, but if you go into Resource Center and you go down to EDI Enrollment, ERA Enrollment. These two links are where you're gonna find your information. So I'm gonna click on EDI Enrollment first. Depending on what clearinghouse, you mentioned you're using uh, Office Ally. Other people watching this video might be using Availity or other clearinghouses. Use the enrollment form your clearinghouse has for you. So for example, I'm here in Ohio. I'm gonna click Ohio Medicare. When this opens, Office Ally has the information that I'm gonna to need to complete this form correctly. And so, give it just a second here, here we go. So for example, line of business payer ID, uh, Ohio Part B 15202, like that's what you want to put in there. Action requested, add provider. Input submitter ID, N10917 use the information here. So the enrollment agreement, let's take a look. Every state is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I don't why, I don't know, here we go. So here is the enrollment agreement, forms and instructions. This will be helpful, but not as helpful as the information that um, they have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this in a new tab. So this is the CGS EDI application. So you can see right here, guys, I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Line of business payer ID. 
So they told you, Ohio Part B ending in 202. Boom. Action required. They told you, add a provider. Come on. There we go. Uh, input. So if we come down here, both. So that and that. Name of submitter ID. Here's a submitter ID number. I'm going to copy that. Name of submitter ID is Office Ally. So let's come back out here. Office Ally. Okay. So that's kind of weird. It's hard to see, but it looks like that's what I'm supposed to put here if the submitter ID number is left blank. Okay. Um, sub type of submitter ID, clearinghouse, EDI contact, customer service. So let's go here. Type is clearinghouse, customer service. And then, of course, you've got the rest of the information. Phone number. Guys, obviously I know you can figure this out, but it's just so much easier when you have something to follow. What do we have? Vancouver. Washington. Grab the zip. Submitter email address. So it's still Office Ally information here. And then ECC for the network service vendor. So the email address was a CCV, I think. No, ECC. Apologies, ECC. Now, provider for whom submitter will be transmitting, right? So your group practice or the provider name, in most cases, is going to be the group practice. So like for me, it'll be Total Therapy Solutions LLC. That's the name of my group. Provider contact, that would be me. Provider telephone, 513 420-9999, uh, 5900. This is all my clinic information. Oops, Florida. What in the world? I haven't been in Florida in like 20 years. Oh my goodness, guys. There we go. Group provider number. Group NPI. So you're going to have to look up your group NPI, look up your EIN number. If you don't have a Medicare group provider number, just leave it blank. You don't have one yet. Uh, but actually, so I guess this is, sorry, since this is for Medicare, you should have your group provider number. You will enter your group provider number in here. Um, and then your group MPI and your tax ID number. Uh, then you print it, you've got your signature, you print the name, so Anthony Maritato, and then down here I sign it, must be signed by the provider, and this, this is what I submit. EDI enrollment agreement, group practice name, address, city, state, zip, authorized signature. This would be, you know, you as the practice owner, print it, title, group Medicare number, group MPI. This is, these are the forms. Now, just to show you when I say it's, it's different across different payers, um, let's go to Arizona. So Medicare of Arizona, you can see here, you have to log into your EDISS Connect account. And that's how you submit your enrollment. 
you know, everyone is going to be just a little different. Let's take a look at what Maine says. Go to NGS Medicare, complete the I enrollment, and then so here this is clearinghouse contact. Like this is the instructions for how you submit their enrollment. You can see the codes and stuff that you use. So guys, I hope this answers your question. For the ERA portion of this, let's go back to Resource Center, go down to ERA. This is where you're gonna look for specific payers. So let's say, for example, United Healthcare. And um, if we come down to United Healthcare, All Savers Insurance, United Healthcare Oxford, there's multiple versions of United Healthcare. Here we've got community plan. We have that here in Ohio. Um, here's the community plan for multiple states. So if I click on that, this you have to go by payer. Each enrollment again is a little different, but again, you have provider name. So that would be total therapy solutions, provider address, uh, federal tax ID, group NPI, contact name, email address, uh, authorized signature, and we submit it here. And then let's take a look at a different one. Let me go back in here. Let's see if we can find Aetna. So here's Aetna Better Health Florida. Here's Aetna, Aetna Better Health Ohio. MD on ERA enrollment. So this is where it's taking me out to here. Let's jump back into this again. So where you should send it. So you fax the form, email the MD on ERA enrollment form. Um, you know, so every one of these is going to have a little bit of a different instruction. Certainly, as you're filling these out, if you run into issues, I would contact Office Ally Tech Support because Office Ally is going to be the best one to advise you on how to fill it out because these ERAs are going to Office Ally. They're not necessarily coming to you directly. So use Office Ally resources to help you get this stuff figured out. All right, guys, sorry about that. That ended up going a little longer than I expected. I hope this video answered your question. For those of you who are still watching, subscribe to the channel, post your questions on YouTube, share and like these videos, even if you're sharing them into your own Facebook feed, um, sharing them with your partner. The more engagement we get, the better the channel is going to grow. Guys, as always, I appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next video.